In this time of uncertainty, the Montgomery County Public Schools Office of Student and Family Support and Engagement wants to provide as many resources as possible to ensure that everyone in our community has a way forward. Hi, I'm Christina Connolly. I am the Director of Psychological Services um, for the Montgomery County Public Schools. And welcome to our new video series called Waymaking. We will be covering a variety of mental health and social emotional topics in this series. Our goal is to help families make their way through many of the emotional challenges that we are faced with today. I have with me my co-host, Gillian Hubner. Gillian is a chairperson of the MCC PTA Committee on School Climate and Safety. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Christina. It's good to see you. I miss seeing you guys in the office, but here we are in our new lives, which uh, are causing some levels of stress for all of us, students and kids, students and teachers and parents. Um, so our conversation today is about stress in this new environment and how we can navigate it and support each other in the midst of it. Um, I know that like in the midst of crisis, kids exhibit stress in ways that may look different than what we're used to. So of course, parents know and love their kids more than anyone. Um, and they can recognize when their child is exhibiting stress, but some of this might look different than what we're used to. Can you sort of speak into that? What does stress look like in kids? All right, thank you for that question. And definitely, so as a single parent, I do understand um, some of the signs that we see from our kids um, due to stress. I mean, so many as you're hearing on the news and everywhere else. And so some of the things that we want parents to look for is, are you seeing like, increases and decreases in um, your students' activity levels? So maybe before, you know, they really like to get out and play or play their instruments or play games. And then all of a sudden you may see them like in the bed a lot or not wanting to get up or they're like hyper busy, like they're running around doing everything, bouncing off the walls and you're sitting here like, oh my God, what's happened to my child? Um, because their activity level has gone up. Maybe they're sleeping more um, or sleeping less. Um, they might be eating more, eating less. Um, they also may be irritable. So let's say, you know, like normally, you know, children have a certain level of irritability, you know, or even adolescents. So what we're looking at is something more than what you normally see um, in terms of like their, you know, their normal like, oh, I don't want to be bothered is turning into like constant every day, all day, you know, types of like what's going on and you can't and they're not able to calm easily. Um, and they may be fighting with their loved ones, family members, siblings, and more than just your typical family sibling. I'm hearing a lot from families around um, my kids are bouncing off, constantly fighting with each other, like what's going on. Again, all these things are part of stress. Um, they might be crying a lot or getting upset over things that um, you're like, wait, why did they get upset over that? Or um, maybe they want to be alone all the time. They're just in their rooms, the door closed. They don't want to talk. They come and come downstairs to get a bowl of cereal and go back upstairs because um, they don't want to be bothered. You also have to be worried about the increasing use potentially if they're um, using alcohol or um, potentially other drugs. Like if you go into a room and you smell like these sweet smells and they don't have incense, are they vaping? Um, and so looking at some of these things um, is important. Yeah, thanks for that. I think it's also important to remember that stress looks different at different ages and stages of development. So what's, what might it look like for a young child versus a teenager? Oh, excellent question, excellent question. And so when you look at Kids, let's say early childhood. So we're talking like maybe preschoolers, maybe up to around second grade, um, that maybe they're not able to sit still with things that they normally like to do. So I know it's like for my child, we just saw that Onward is on Disney Plus. And so like she was really excited to see it, but if they're like, no, I can't do this, like they're bouncing, things that they normally would like to do, but they can't sit still. Also issues around like bedwetting, um, you know, like they're, you know, potty train, but all of a sudden you're like, wait, why are they wetting the bed at night again? Um, or having frequent nightmares, or maybe they don't want to um, touch their food um, or things like they only want to eat cheese pizza and they won't eat anything else. Like, because like, kids are normally picky, but it's beyond just that. 
or let's say if you have a kid who's around like third to fourth grade. Now, normally when they get a little bit older, they can vocalize their fears more. Um, and maybe they want to talk about what's going on with COVID-19 all the time. Or maybe they're just like, I don't want to talk about it. I refuse, like whatever, nothing is going on. And it turns into this denial um, around things. Um, they might be afraid to go outside um, or even just to go for a walk or um, going out to the backyard and maybe they'll say, you know, a trampoline. Maybe they want to go and do that. Like they're just refusing. They're afraid to go outside or that they're sleeping a lot still, or maybe they always want to eat their comfort foods. Um, or maybe also you might see that they want to avoid virtual schools. Like, you know what? Since I can't go to school, I just want to avoid it all together. I don't care. I don't, I don't want to do this. Or maybe they want to play with their video games alone, or they just want, don't want to be around family members as much, um, including they may have irritability as well. Now, looking at adolescents, so I'm thinking, so this is around maybe between like seventh up to 12th grade. Um, and again, so we talked before about the alcohol use. You have to be concerned about alcohol, intense and other drugs. Um, parents need to check um, if you have alcohol in the home, like what are the levels of that? Um, to make sure that your children aren't um, sneaking at night and potentially using it. Um, and, but some of their anxiety signs may be more similar to adults as well, because they're older, they're able to express their feelings a little bit more. Um, and that, but you also have to be concerned about because they have access to um, social media and to the internet, they have their phones. They also may have a lot more misinformation about what's going on, uh, where they may see things like conspiracy theories or other stuff. And you might, and that might increase their anxiety because they're seeing all this stuff on social media and they're not able to discern between um, the real news and let's say like fake news. Um, you may see them sleeping more than usual. I mean, like when I was an adolescent, that slept to like 12 o'clock every day anyway, but you know, if they're sleeping to like three and they're missing their afternoon virtual classes, um, then that might be a problem. Um, and again, still, you might see the crying, you may see withdrawal or maybe even clinging to others or arguing with family members more than usual. Um, and that, but another thing is that parents need to make sure that we're checking um, their phones, checking their social media and gaming chats, because they may be sharing things that they're feeling with their friends, because adolescents are more likely to talk to their friends about their feelings than the, the adults. And so if we go and we check some of these things, we might be able to get a better sense of um, what's going on with them because they're, they're sharing them with their friends. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things too is that sometimes when kids act out, they're actually making a bid for attention, right? And so sometimes pausing as parents and realizing, oh, that's not actually meant to make me upset that my kid just needs something from me. And so turning in, tuning into them and then turning toward them um, and just maybe recognizing like, oh, that you, I get the sense that you're, you're really stressed and I'm stressed too. And I think part of, um, you know, what our kids are picking up on is our own stress, right? And so also acknowledging to our kids that, yeah, this is stressful for me too. And this is what I'm feeling. And this is where I feel it in my chest or in my stomach. And, oh, but this is actually what makes me feel better. Look at these flowers coming up or something like that. And, and helping your kids see how you're dealing with your stress and then also being there for them as they, are processing it too, because this is so new for so many of us. We're not, we don't even have access to what we usually have access to to cope, right? Our friends and our busyness and our schedule and our sports. So we're sort of all trying to figure out how to navigate stress in a new way. So what are some of the strategies that you would recommend for parents as they're trying to help their kids? Oh, absolutely. And I just want to bring up, before going into some of the strategies, one of the points that you meant said is key and that it is important for parents to be able to have these conversations with their kids and also important for them and especially for older kids to show that these feelings of anxiety are normal and that this is a stressful time and that there isn't something wrong um, with having these feelings or going through it it's important to acknowledge it and then going into what can we do to be able to address um, the problems that are there and talking to parents being honest. I mean, not mind you, to a, a point and developmentally. So you're not going to tell your whole story to a two year old. But, you know, if you have an adolescent, it's OK. You know, like, I'm feeling this, too. This is stressful. I'm 
you know, either I'm an essential employee and I having to go to work or I'm working from home. And this is, this is hard um, to help them to see that, you know, we're all in this together. Um, and so, and let's work together as a family in order to address some of these things. Um, some of the things that families can do is make sure that you have a routine. So looking at, so what time are you waking up in the morning? Are you doing your daily hygiene bits? Like making sure you're brushing your teeth, taking a shower, putting on your clothes. I mean, you see the things that are, you know, I have my, my daytime pajamas and my nighttime pajamas, whatever that might be. <laughs> um, so having that as part of our routine. Um, having time to eat, um, making sure you put into the schedule family time. What are things that you're going to be able to do together? Because it's hard. I mean, I'm, I'm a single mom. I'm working from home. My daughter is also doing the virtual things um, with school. And so I try to make sure at night I cook dinner and then we sit down and we watch something together online um, just to make sure that we're spending time together um, with each other. And then still having a regular bedtime, which I know is hard, um, but we got to make sure kids still have these things. Um, some other things that parents can look at in terms of having, let's say, like mindful moments. And so MCPS has a series of videos that are online um, that goes into like mindfulness activities that families can um, watch and even do together to make sure that we're getting centered, breathing, um, and especially showing like how it can help us to be able to address um, many of the things that are going on. How are you exercising? Are you going outside for a walk? Um, are you, do you have exercise equipment in your home? Um, what are you things that you're doing or to get up and move and get your heart racing, blood pumping? Um, and then also healthy eating. It is so hard. Like, cause you, you're home, you have your cookies, your snacks, you know, other things there. It's easy just to jump in. Like I'm stressed out and I go eat. Like, no, can we make sure that we also have like some carrots or going to the store and getting like the little halo oranges that kids like? Um, what are we doing to make sure we're eating healthy? And also playing games. So take out those old board games. So if you have some Monopoly, Life, Sorry, whatever that might be, like we have Sorry, we have Clue, we have Uno. Um, we're playing Moncala. My daughter's really good at that. She always beats me. And um, playing games with each other. But also for younger kids, what are we doing in terms of because um, older kids have their friends and they can talk on the phone. But for younger kids, um, setting up virtual play dates with each other so that they can talk to their friends that they can't see um, when they go to school. Um, and so talking with families, just to schedule time so they can still interact with their friends, talk with them. Spending time to cook together, read together, listen to the music and dance together. Like whatever you can do to kind of be together as a family. Yeah, I think those are all great ideas. I've been thinking a lot about how um, when I worked in a war zone, we, um, I mean, that was really stressful for a prolonged period, but I had never um, had music as such a huge part of my life. And we just had dances. And I mean, those were actually some pretty uh, powerfully positive moments in the midst of really hard times. So thank you for sharing that. I want to ask you, what's your, um, What's your, where do you find your resilience? Where, what's your like number one go-to? Oh, I think for me, my number one go-to is really um, spending time with my daughter. Um, Cause it's hard um, just for me. And we find things that we like together. So like recently we did, we've been watching Lego masters and they just had the finale. And so we both love Lego. And so just finding something that is fun and has nothing to do with work, putting that aside, um, that has really helped me um, in stress. So in, in initial, all of this, like I was having trouble sleeping, everything. And now that I'm finding something to do, it has been really helpful um, for me in order to try to manage, you know, everything that's going on. All right. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Always got to look for the resilience somewhere. Um, and so then finally, I mean, I think, you know, parents are really pulling a lot out of the box, right, in terms of um, showing up in ways that we maybe never had to before. And, you know, it, it's working and it's also really sometimes super hard. And so what can MCPS offer for parents who are truly maxed out, who feel like, okay, I'm in over my head, I just can't. Um, are there resources within MCPS that, that parents who are really concerned about their kids or maybe even their own caretaking abilities can turn to? 
Yes, and we are available to provide support um, to our families who are in need. And so although our physical buildings are closed, our virtual school community is still open, we are still here to provide support to our families who are in need. Um, so if a family has concerns, um, they can contact their building principal, um, they can go on to our MCPS coronavirus webpage to look for information, um, and that our counselors, our school psychologists are also available um, to provide support, do check-ins. Um, we also have uh, parent community coordinators, we have pupil personnel workers, we have ESOL transition counselors, who are also doing check-ins with our families um, who are in need. And so we're here, and if you need help, you know, call us, send us an email um, so that we can provide um, support for you or even getting you connected with resources that you may need. And MCCPTA can help with that too. We know the system pretty well and we're here to help people help navigate and support each other. Thank you for everything you guys are doing. Thanks for still showing up in this strange way. Oh, no, thank you for joining us today um, for our first video of Waymaking. And so and then we also want to make sure to thank our viewers for joining us today for our new series. Um, and if you want to send us additional questions or topics to discuss on the show, please visit the link on your screen. We will be addressing a variety of topics, including social emotional learning, suicide, child abuse, domestic violence, threat assessment, and talking to community providers in Montgomery County. So please join us next time on MCPS Waymaking. Mm -hmm.